Hey there, Chad with Prodigal's customer success team here. In this video, we're going to talk about the task editor. So what is the task editor? It's specifically the thing that's the basis for all scheduling within Prodigal. Everything ultimately breaks down into a task, that way nothing gets forgotten. So there's a few different places that you can add tasks or events into the system. You can add them from, of course, the tasks page. You could add them from the schedule page, which is essentially all the tasks laid out onto different lengths of time uh, of a calendar. So a day view, month view, a week view, where you could add events to any of those specific days or tasks to any of those days organized by worker. And then there's the projects page, which is a schedule organized by job site. You'll be able to see what tasks are scheduled, who is supposed to be out there, um, at that task and how many people are going to be there and how long they're going to be there for and what's going on with the rest of the job. So there could be many things on one day, but it keeps it organized by project. Since Prodigal is a mainly project-based workflow, this is a great place to start. Uh, but let's just go ahead and actually add in a task into the task list. Uh, the last thing I'll mention before heading over to the task list is that when you make a change in either the projects page, the schedule page, or the task page, the other two are uh, updated respectively. So if I change something in the tasks page or add something in the tasks page, it will update the schedule and the project timeline accordingly. And uh, if I make a change in one of those others, it'll update the other two. So it's all linked up together. It's just different views of the same exact information. And uh, if you schedule something for a worker, they'll be notified about it. They'll also be aware of what's on their upcoming calendar. So let's over to, head over to the task list. From here, I'll go ahead and add a new event. And there's lots of different types of events, right? So there's a generic task. This needs to be marked as complete. You could add a punch list to this. You could add details to this. Uh, it would have a start and an end date. There's a deadline. Uh, which is s simply a reminder, usually, or something that just needs to get done by a certain time. And it just is a get this done by this scheduled time. There's a follow up reminder, which is usually used within the uh, lead pipeline, where you can remember to call people or schedule these reminders that will show up on your task list to go ahead and call a customer at any specific day or time. This can be used in the lead pipeline or in the project timelines, just to make sure that you're keeping on top of your workflow with your customers. Then there's also an estimate meeting, which is another type of task that's typically used in the lead pipeline to go on site and look at a job. There's also ones like a meeting. This is simply just a scheduled meeting. It could be associated with a job or not with a job, time off or absent. This is um, really useful to record when a worker or a contractor doesn't show up to really keep track of what's going on out at your job sites and to have kind of a little history record just to say, you know, such and such contractor didn't show up. This is one of the reasons that we might be behind schedule or, you know, something along those lines. That way you have a level of accountability and a record uh, to bring that up with that contractor if it's necessary. And uh, let's just go ahead and create a generic task here. So we have a task name. We could just say um, task for Chris. And then we could add some important details um, here is some important info. Okay, and then we could also add a step list. So this is um, kind of punch list items. Now by default, if you don't add a step list, the name of the task will be the to-do item on the task. Um, but let's go ahead and add something. It's a punch list one, punch list two, three, four, and five. And then uh, in here, we also have the schedule task area. So this would allow us to schedule the task. We could either select an employee or a date um, if we know exactly who or when we want this to be done. And additionally, we could select uh, it in the schedule. So this would actually take us over to the schedule page with this task open still, where we could actually pick a day on the calendar. Now, we'll talk about that in another video. Let's just go ahead and select the user account we're in. It's Chris Traeger and then we'll select a specific day. And we'll say for today, and we'll say it's an entire work day. So now what you can see is there's no address, there's no contact information, this isn't related to a customer or anything like that. And the only thing we know is there's a worker here, Chris Traeger. If we want to actually associate this with a job, we could um, use this associate with project or lead uh, button right here. So we'll go ahead and type in Vance 
for the Vance master bathroom project. Now I have a project that's completely empty in the project timelines that we're gonna add this from the task list. You can do the exact same thing here from the schedule so that when you add things onto the schedule, it will show up on the project timeline and in the task page. So let's go ahead and associate this with Vance Master Bathroom. You'll see it grabbed the color of the project. It knows that it's called Vance Master Bathroom for Vance Refrigeration, Bob Vance. It's an active job. Here's the address. We know that the project managers are Ben Wyatt and Chris Traeger. And you also have the contact info right here. So you can see the phone number, the email, etc. Um, so that's all of the all the information right here and then you can also see um, over here that it is associated again with Chris Traeger for the entire workday. We've selected it in the schedule and it does say now that it's associated with uh, Vance Master Bathroom Project. And again the um, address is down here. You can also select an icon and there's about 3,000 icons in here, so feel free to take your pick. The icons are really great for project templates. We'll get into that as well in another video, um, but there's a lot in there. It just creates a mental association for people that this icon is directly related to this scope of work, especially for a repeatable scope of work and something that you might put into a project template. And then lastly is the task color. So you can have the task color here. By default, it's the same as a project, or if I actually wanted to choose a color of a task just to indicate a status or a specific thing for my own workflow, I could uh, you know, specify an individual task with a specific color. So if I close out of this task editor, it'll say we created this task for Chris is what we called it. If we head over to the project timeline, we can scroll down to the yellow Vance Master Bathroom project. And what we see right here is again the same information who the project manager is, um, what's going on on this job site. And the only task we have is the task for Chris. So from an administrator's perspective, I could click on this little icon down here to see the punch list or the important details. And I could check this off on behalf of the worker or they could check it off and I would see the progress of what they've checked off. Additionally, on this task, you could hit the drop down from the project timeline here and you could also put a comment on it. So putting a comment on a task from here would allow me to put a message in here. Um, hey, Chris, I got the demo um, supplies at the shop for you. So we'll put a little message on here and we submit that and it would make a notification available in the Prodrill mobile application for whoever the assigned worker is. And then the assigned worker could also message back whoever the project manager is. Uh, so they could essentially message back and forth within Prodrill. And additionally, if we go back to the task list, we'll see that this is now marked as 40% complete. It also has a number one up here on the quick options where, where this worker would get to their comment channel. And they could of course reply back. So if this was, um, you know, the worker was logged into their account, they could go ahead and do that and we could essentially have a text conversation organized by task. Back to the project timeline. If we go back down to the Vance Master Bathroom project, what if this task needed to take up multiple days? If I simply click on the task name here or click the drop down and hit edit task, those would both do the same thing and open the task editor. Now from here, I could click on the schedule button and there's this little blue button down here. It says schedule more days. There's a few things you can do. You could either do a repeating task, which would be a schedule like Monday through Friday, we want uh, this task to repeat for three months, something like that. And you could add several people to it. Maybe you actually had four or five people on this and they were to be on site for three months. You could do a Monday through Friday schedule like that, no problem. They would simply check off that they went there every day and they're good to go. Now, what if uh, we want this one task to just be like five days and we wanna add a punch list like this over spanning those five days so we can see how completed this scope of work is over those five days. Let's go ahead and try that. So if I uh, come down here to the schedule, I'll hit multi-day. And you'll see when I click that multi-day button, it added a second task here and it put it right onto Monday. And now I as well can hit add another day and add another day and add another day. And now I have five assignments or time blocks, as we would call them from the schedule page, on this one 
task. And if the uh, task progress or the punch list is checked off, the percentage goes up accordingly. So as this job progresses and each of these tasks would go behind the today line here on the projects page, it would continue to pro progress along and you'd be able to see exactly how completed this task is. And then uh, finally, if you did have any additional items to add, you could add item six, seven, and eight. Uh, now that there's eight tasks, you can see it's 50% because we're adding punch list items onto this task because sometimes the scope changes or sometimes you need to remind your workers of a couple extra things you found when you were on site. Just as a project manager, you would really easily be able to um, be on your task list. You could be filtering by my projects and this task would be showing up for you if you were a project manager. Then you just hit the edit button. And again, it's the same task editor. We can see who's out there for however many days. We could see the step list. We could add all of those punch list items and uh, we could as well check it off on their behalf. So that's a quick overview of the task editor and how to work on the task editor from some of the different scheduling views. Anytime that task editor pops up, it has the same effect across all three schedules, uh, whether it's the task list, the schedule page, or the projects page. And that's an overview of uh, the task editor and project. Thanks for watching.